So we are now back and as I've promised you last time, we will now be discussing the different um, research designs that you need to know for you to be able to write your um, chapters 1 to 3. Essentially, when you say research designs, um, they're composed of um, quantitative, qualitative, and mixed method. And one of the reasons why we do a quantitative research design is because of the result of the review of the literature. Meaning to say that upon reviewing the literature, we were able to look for a blind spot. And uh, this blind spot would mean that there are conflicting findings and therefore our goal is to test whether the hypothesis can be accepted or not. When a research paper is statistical in nature, then it is called quantitative. On the other hand, if upon reading the literature, there are limited um, resources that are related to your topic, then it is called blank spot. Therefore, your goal when you see a blank spot in the literature is to generate or come up with a new framework or a new added literature. And that is what you call qualitative research design. There are times that when uh, you do a research, you will be encountering two problems, and that is a blind spot and a blank spot. That's where mixed method enters into the picture. So for now, we will start with the quantitative research design. And one of the um, categories of quantitative research design is what we call descriptive research. Descriptive research is defined as a purposive process of gathering, analyzing, classifying, and tabulating data about prevailing conditions, practices, beliefs, process, trends, and cause and effect relationships. And then, out of this, you're going to make an adequate and accurate interpretation about such data with a statistical method. So it's very clear that from the definition that I've provided you, the keywords are gathering, classifying, and tabulating data. And upon tabulating data, you need to make sense of those data. And then in making sense of those data, you need to use statistical methods. So meaning to say that descriptive research is very statistical in nature. But under descriptive, there are so many sub-research designs. I will enumerate them one by one. They are case studies, surveys, de developmental studies, assessment or evaluation studies, comparative studies, correlational studies, tracer studies, trends and projection studies, ex post facto, <clears throat> and documentary analysis. So these different designs are under descriptive research design. But we will discuss them one by one. Let's begin with descriptive case studies. When you say case studies, it is a type of detailed and in-depth research involving few respondents only, ranging from one to a small size of less than 10. It may be small in terms of number, but the time frame is lengthy. That's why it, it should be done over a considerable period of time. An example of this is if you would like to evaluate the development of um, an autistic patient, for example, we know that autism is an, uh, is an example of a developmental um, delay problem. And assessing the development of an autistic uh, patient would require a lot of time. And you need not to get many patients or many respondents. You can only get from a number of 1 up to 10. And then you evaluate the development of um, an autistic patient. Kailang, it will be a considerable period of time. Nga. And that's why it's called case studies. Another type of uh, descriptive research is survey research or descriptive survey research. A survey research is used to gather relatively limited data from a relatively large number of cases. So the purpose is to gather information about the prevailing conditions 
or about the variables under the study. Example, if you would like to know the stresses and um, coping strategies of spinal cord injury patients in, in the hospital that can be done using uh, survey research. Or for example, if you would like to know um, whether the Department of Health is very effective in addressing the current pandemic COVID crisis, then you can do a survey research. That's, that's what we call descriptive survey research. Another type of descriptive um, research survey is what we call total population survey. From the term itself, meaning to say that you will involve the total population, the entire possible number of respondents. On the other hand, when you say naman sample survey, you will only get a subset no, of the entire population. Social survey would include um, asking people of the current social situations, for example, issues about uh, poverty, issues about the use of um, learning management system in education, issues about the appropriation of, um, of SAP that is given by DSWD. So that can be called a social survey. A school survey is usually done from among our students. And uh, usually our goal is to have a profile of our students in terms of their age, in terms of their um, family status, in terms of the whereabouts of the parents, etc., etc. That's what we call school sur survey. On the other hand, public opinion survey is uh, almost synonymous to social survey because what, we, what you would like to know is uh, you would like to get the pulse of the public. Example, on the closure of ABS-CBN, no? and you would like to know whether people would like to agree on the closure of ABS-CBN, then you can do a public opinion survey. Poll survey is usually done by those <clears throat> in the politics. If they would like to know whether they would have the chance to, to get elected in the next election, then they do a poll survey. And most of the time, they use uh, media or social media in doing this poll survey. Market survey is conducted by people in the business. Of course, uh, it is um, a normal scenario that when you open a business, you need first to ensure that the product that you would like to offer the, the, the market can, uh, are really needed by the community. You do, not, you do not sell products that are not needed by the community. So what, what you do is uh, what we call market survey. Another type of survey is comparative survey. As the term implies, you just do a survey to compare. Example, you would like to compare the performance of ABS-CBN and uh, Channel 7. That's a, that's a very uh, easy way of comparing. Of course, longitudinal survey, as the term implies, this survey would, would include longer time. It takes about 10 to 20 years to do the survey. And cross-sectional survey is usually done in regional trial court when there are cases where uh, the, the suspect is being investigated, for example, and being interviewed and being cross-assessed by another lawyer. That's an example of um, cross-sectional survey. Job analysis survey would include analyzing the satisfaction, for example, of the employees in an organization or evaluating, for example, the performance of the employees of any, of, of any institution. That's an example of job analysis survey. Community survey is uh, most commonly done by nurses because nurses, they, 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 they have a community organizing participatory action research wherein the goal is to assess the community on the health situation and then later on they provide an action out of the survey that they do. Of course, the uh, very popular type of survey is correlational survey 
this will involve x and y we will have a greater discussion of correlational survey later so when we say assessment or evaluation studies this refers to the study on the efficiency or effectiveness of policies instruments or the variables that may be considered if you are for example in the health field and you would like to know whether the maternal and child health care program of the department of health is effective then you can do an assessment or evaluation studies currently you may evaluate the program of the department of health in preventing the spread of coronavirus that's an example of assessment or evaluation studies the main goal is to determine the effectiveness of the program that is being implemented meanwhile comparative studies are um, studies that would like to compare the result in the differences in certain characteristics according to the variable considered for example you would like to know whether which is more effective um, drugs that lowers um, hypertension with um, hi with pineapple juice or drug alone or meaning you would like to know the effectiveness of pineapple juice as an aid in lowering blood pressure that that's an example of uh, comparative studies correlational correlational research is the most popular type of research which i think you are doing because of the ivdv model this explores the relationship between two or more variables one is independent and the other one is dependent variable for example you would like to know whether um, poverty indices would have an influence on child malnutrition so therefore your x is poverty indices and your y is child malnutrition because there is a big possibility that poverty is contributing to the malnutrition of of uh, children so that's an example of correlational research or the most common iq and academic performance parang your hypothesis is as you increase your intelligence quotient you also increase the academic performance of the student so that, that's an example of correlational research so the independent variable is um, intelligence quotient and the dependent variable is the academic performance of the students now if you would like to uh, follow up the development of certain conditions or particular sets of people for example you would like to know whether the graduates of the institution or the school have been employed and have been productive then you do a tracer study because the tracer study would like to determine the employability and productivity of of the graduates of any institution trends and projection studies are actually in layman's term in layman's term they call it um, feasibility studies because these are these are used for projects that are forward looking if you would like to know whether your business will prosper in the future you can do a trends and projection studies and in the field of business yung mga kumukuha ng MBA ang tawag nyo rito is feasibility study of course hindi ka mag-open ng programa or hindi ka mag-open ng business nang hindi mo muna pinag-aralan lahat yan naaralin mo in terms of location in terms of your clientele in terms of ROI so yun ang pinag-aaralan sa trends and projection studies and then uh, we also have the documentary analysis it involves the gathering of information by analyzing written records and documents to solve a problem when you say documentary an analysis this would uh, always use a secondary type of data no meaning to say that uh, data are not originally um, gathered by the researcher instead the data are already available you just need to get um, a permission from from that office to get the data for example 
your studies about the relationship between intelligence quotient and academic performance. Intelligence quotient is usually the IQ test is usually administered by a psychometrician. So usually as a guidance office. Yan. And academic performance or grades, these are definitely available in the registrar's office. So you need not to administer intelligence quotient test or IQ test and you need not to go to the teacher to get the grades. All you need to do is to write a letter to the school asking permission if you can utilize the intelligence quotient uh, test results and the academic performance or grades of the student. So we call it documentary analysis. So those are examples of um, uh, descriptive research designs. Of course, another um, design under 